Hello, my name is Jennifer Niles. I'm the Ruth Coulter Heaty Professor of Art History and Classics at Case Western Reserve University. This fall, I was asked to teach the Capstone Seminar for the Art History majors. And I realized it would be a great opportunity to study in depth one of the great monuments of Western art, the Parthenon. In 2001, I had published a book entitled The Parthenon Freeze, in which I suggested a novel arrangement of the gods. The students were willing to take part in this experiment in producing a complex idea in visual form. We had a lot of fun along the way, and I hope you'll find this video both educational and entertaining. At first, when I was presented with this project, it seemed a little strange to base the whole class around a video project. But as the project continued, it seemed very beneficial since as art historians, we not only have to do the research and come up with a hypothesis, but we also have to present that information in an interesting and compelling way to the public. Who in an art history class gets to do something as innovative and as fun as making a video to enhance their professor's thesis on a really influential subject? It's hard to think of a single monument that has elicited more interest among scholars and the general public than the Parthenon. The Temple to Athena on the Acropolis was constructed in the mid-5th century BC and lasted more or less intact until 1687 when it was blown up during a controversy. It has been of great interest to scholars starting in the 18th century with Nicholas Rivet and James Stewart who made meticulous drawings of this monument and its sculptures. The Parthenon is the temple of Athena, the tutelary goddess of Athens. Like Zeus, who enjoyed a festival every four years, Athena was celebrated in the Panathenaea in Athens. This grand event in her honor consisted of equestrian and athletic contests, a torch relay race, music, feasting, and general frivolity. It is a combination of our Easter, Independence Day, and a rodeo. And it culminated in the presentation of a marvelous gift to the goddess, a woven textile known as the peplos. This scene of her receiving the peplos is depicted in the center of the Parthenon. The all marble Parthenon is particularly fascinating to art historians because of its vast sculptural program. This consists of two pediments with at least 50 over life size, fully rounded sculpted figures, 92 plaques known as metopes in high relief that encircle the exterior of the building, and within the colonnade, something very unusual in a Doric building, an ionic low relief frieze. This has as many as 378 human figures and 245 animals, all processing around the building in two parallel files meeting on the east side, where they are received by the 12 Olympian gods. I am Zeus, the king of the gods, as should be obvious because I am the only one of us sitting on a throne. I am the god of thunder, lightning, and rain. I am Hera, goddess of marriage, and as such may seem out of place on a temple of a virgin, but I am important to the Athenians in whose society the oikos, or household, was all important. Behind me stand my mother and father. I am their son, Ares, lover of Aphrodite, and half-brother of Athena. My name is Demeter, and when I'm happy, harvests are bountiful. But when I become upset, the earth dries up and dies. I am Dionysus, god of intoxication, winemaking, theater, illusion, and ecstasy. I am depicted with my hand held high in a toasting position, with a kylix or chalice in my hand. My name is Hermes. I am the god of shepherds, land travel, merchants, athletes, and oratory. On the frieze, I am wearing messenger sandals and I'm holding my winged messenger's cap. Over on this side of the frieze, I am known as the master of the deep, and the other gods of the sea are seated nearby me. Note the grooves carved on my brow. People often say I look upset, but it's hard not to be bitter. I did lose the contest for Athens to Athena. Truly though, I am identified immediately as Poseidon by my mighty trident. Sailors often pray to me for safe passage over the seas. It's a good thing you weren't making the seas angry, while I, Apollo, and my twin sister Artemis were being born on the floating island of Delos. I am the god of music, and can usually be seen with my lyre or kithara. I am also the god of the arts, and the leader of the muses, who inspire mortals. I often reveal truths to mortals, such as suggested by my pose on Parthenon Freeze, where I have my thumb hooked under my robe as though I am ready to reveal myself at any moment. 
I wear my traditional laurel wreath here as well. I am most commonly known as Goddess of the Hunt. My attributes are my short tunic, sandals, bow, and a quiver. On the frieze, my left hand is locked in Aphrodite's arm. Even though I am a virgin goddess, I am the protector of women in childbirth, which connects me to Aphrodite, who is the goddess responsible for their pregnancy. Artemis, don't make me blush. However, that is what I'm known for. I am the goddess of love, beauty, sensuality, and fertility, who inspires love and lust among the gods and mortals. I won the golden apple in the contest with Athena and Hera and helped start the Trojan War. Unfortunately, only small fragments of me remain intact on the Parthenon frieze. I wear a veil and am seen lounging back in luxury on my stool. I am the only god with a pillow. I too am a son of Zeus and Hera, but because of my physical deformity, I was thrown from Mount Olympus and landed on the island of Lemnos, where I was raised by master craftsmen, becoming an expert blacksmith myself and crafting magical items for both heroes and gods. On the Parthenon frieze, I can be identified by the crutch under my arm. In this way, the artist was able to allude to my deformity and easily identify me as Hephaestus, while still depicting me with a healthy and ideal body. That leaves me, Athena, the goddess of wisdom and strategy. My attributes include armor, the aegis, as well as the snake, owl, and olive tree. Zeus and Metis are my parents. It is only fitting that I sit next to my father, the king of the gods, during the Peplos ceremony, which is held here in my honor. The entrance to the Parthenon is at the east end, facing the sunrise. It's here that we encounter the Olympian gods. They're shown in the pediment, witnessing the birth of Athena. They're depicted on the Metopes, battling the giants. And for the first time in Greek art, all 12 of them are depicted on the frieze, watching the peplos ceremony. The gods are sitting on stools, with the exception of Zeus, who merits a throne. By virtue of being seated, the artist can show them 30% larger than the mortals on the frieze. They are divided into two groups of six each, one facing south, the other north, and they're shown in profile. Like most ancient artists, the Greeks preferred the profile view, as they considered a frontal face aesthetically unpleasing. namely a semicircle. So I drew up this diagram showing the gods seated in a semicircle with a peplos ceremony in the center. This was not very satisfactory, so in class I asked if a student could, on a computer, produce a 3D model as a conceptualization. I would have liked to find some confirmation for this circular seating plan in literature, so I had scoured the text of Homer on to find some description of how the gods actually sit. It's in Pindar who speaks of, quote, fine seats in a circle where the kings of the earth and sky took their places, end quote. So we not only have visual confirmation here on the frieze, but now we have literary confirmation that this is how the Greeks envisioned their gods as seated together. <laughs>
When we filmed outside, we lined up in the straight line as it would be on the Parthenon Freeze, and we all realized immediately that it was very awkward and not the best solution. So as soon as we shifted into the semicircle, it felt a lot more natural and a lot more elegant. There were a lot of really special moments while putting together this project. I especially enjoyed the good humor of like everybody that was involved with it. It was a lot of fun. The actual filming day was a lot of fun. It was hectic a little bit. It was very cold. <laughs> it was so cold out when we were shooting, but I was the only one who had like any sort of protection from the weather. So I felt so bad for especially Demeter, who was to, was to my left because she was, she was freezing, didn't have any sort of um, coat or anything on and I, and I felt really bad for being the only well-dressed guy <laughs> in the part that had freeze. The students have spoken for themselves as to how this project has informed them about the arts and culture of the ancient Greeks, so distant in time and space. We hope this video serves to animate a masterpiece of Western art carved some two and a half millennia ago and sheds new light on antiquity.